Kenya's Gold. Good evening, viewers, and thank you, thank you so much for joining us right here at Kenya's Gold on this very last week of the month of September. Where is time flying to? I don't know. But one thing I do know for sure, I miss Tere right here in studio, and I know very many of you back at home feel the same, but the good news is when he comes back, he'll come bearing absolutely fantastic agricultural stories from farmers across the country so do stick around for that and more now our all day everyday mission right here at Kenya's Gold is putting you on the know when it comes to all matters agriculture and with the help of experts we also discuss and explore ways on how we can streamline this sector all for the betterment of our farmers and today and this entire week will not be any different very many thanks for joining us from wherever it is is that you are watching us from we do have a great show lined up for you as we kick start this week my name is violet angina Now, moving on to the agenda of the day, Mondays, as is the norm, we do focus on the horticultural sector, which is divided into four categories. Here we are talking about your fruits, your flowers, your vegetables, your medicinal and aromatic plants as well. Now, the horticultural sector is a very important sector because it does fetch the country a lot of revenue through foreign exchange. It's also a good source of income for a lot of small scale farmers on top of that it does contribute highly to food security in the country and it also supports the growth of other sectors through the provision of raw materials for agro processing so what can we do collectively to improve the horticultural sector by exploring the arid and semi-arid areas which more often than not are left bare we get to learn about that and more through a very interesting project that we bumped into in Kibwezi. Take a look. today's gold conversation and today we are not in studio instead we are in Kibwezi County and I can tell you one thing for sure in the Gen Z language the Sun is sunning it's doing that thing to mean it's extremely hot now agriculture in Kenya is mainly rain fed meaning we do depend on the rain for most of our agricultural activities however in the wake of climate change that is not a very sustainable way of of practicing agriculture. Now in areas like this, like I told you, we are in Kibwezi right now, annually they receive about 70 millimeters of rainfall. And we have countries like Israel, whereby in the desert regions, they do receive about 20 millimeters of rainfall annually. However, they have managed to use that and convert that land into a food basket, transferring and exporting food to different parts of the world. What will it take to convert this region as dry as it looks into an agricultural basket. That is the conversation that we want to get into right here, right now. So come along with me. Let's do this. Hi, honey. Hi. Hello. How are you? Oh, so happy to see you here. Nice to finally see you. You know, there's someone who's hearing me calling you honey and they think it's your pet name. Please tell them that's your real name as this you introduce yourself. <laughs> this is my real name, but I have another name. Tell me. Because my students, they call me Ima. Ima. Ima is mama. Oh, no. Nice. So I'm a mother of all my students. I have over 800 students from Kenya. Can you take one more, 801? I'm the 801 one. Uh, I will think. <laughs> I need to interview you and then we'll see if you're patient mm -hmm. to do agriculture. All right. And you, if, if you are open minded, great. So I will take you. I can be the 801 child. Yes, of course. Great. Okay. Now yes. let us start this introduction <laughs> by getting to know a little bit more of who Hani is. Wow. So, first of all, I'm Hani. This is my real name honey I'm a mother I'm a grandmother for three amazing grandchildren but I'm also a mother of 
over 24,000 students who are coming from different countries. I have more than 800 of them from Kenya. Right. We have a school in our desert. I live, I come from the desert. I come from Israel. I come from the desert. And when I say desert, if you close your eyes, imagine a desert, mm -hmm. it's worse than it. It's really, really hard condition, limited natural resources, only, only, only 30 millimeters of rain, arid soil, extreme weather. This is a beautiful weather. Mm -hmm. We don't have good conditions to agriculture, uh -huh. but you know, I think what's special in Israel that we overcome the odds and the challenges and we can do, if we will it, it is not a dream for us. We right. can do. We are the same. We have, I'm a farmer, not just a farmer. I, I'm an educator and a farmer. Uh -huh. And I think this is the combination that I really like. Great. I, I'm also a Holocaust survivor, a um, second generation. For me to share the knowledge, to, if I have something that I'm strong in, mm -hmm. I need to do. People ask me, why? Why do you do it for others? So my answer is another question. Why not? Why not? We should do. This is the way we should do. Great. Why not? Great. So that's what we are doing. And we came here to Kenya because I learned about Kenya from my students and I fall in love. I, Part of my heart belongs to here. This is my second home in the world. I want to get to know a lot more about why you fell in love with Kenya and also how, like you said, you have a lot of challenges in Israel, but you learn how to overcome them. I'd want to find out how you've overcome that. But before we get there, you yes. said you have about 24,000 plus students. Yes. And eight yes. yes, and 800 of them are from Kenya. Kenya. Talk to us about where the rest of the students are from ah, and okay. what are the demographics to we have a lot of young people now being curious and interested in matters agriculture. This is the problem, you know, you just put the point on the main challenge of the world. This is the food security. You see the population growth, but you see that we have less and less quality water, less and less farmers, because young people, they don't want to work in agriculture. It's outside and sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's very cold. It's dirty job by hands. They prefer to sit in an office. So we want to attract these people, the young people to be proud. I'm very proud to say I am a farmer. What do you grow? I grow dates, but <laughs> I used to grow before flowers to the auction in Holland. I used to grow pepper sweet pepper, I used to grow um, uh, uh, tomatoes, I used to grow um, eggplants, and I was very, very, you know, it's like babies, when you see plants from nothing, you can create something, <laughs> believe me, after I talk to you, you will come to be, a, you, you want to be a farmer. Right. You put seeds and you see how it grows, not a miracle, not because you pray, because you treat them like babies, right. you treat them like kids, and they grow and you, they give you plants right. and they give you fruits sorry they give you fruits and this food this is my aim i want to feed more and more people in the world i want that everybody will have food on the table right that's, that's what we need to do that's so what mm -hmm. is deserve everybody deserve it all right that's my really really big purpose right so where are the rest of your students from wow so we have from africa mainly from africa and asia from Africa, the biggest group, the biggest group from Kenya. We cooperate with universities, Nairobi University, Eagleton, Jekwad, Kenyatta, um, Kewi, Kewi, this is a Kenyan Water Institute. Others come from Tanzania, your neighbors. Mm -hmm. We have more from Liberia, from Gambia. We had a small group from, um, how they call it, uh, Cape Verde, Cabo mm -hmm. Verde. Mm -hmm. And others, they come from Asian countries like right. Thailand, like Myanmar, like uh -huh. Nepal, like Cambodia, like Indonesia, right. even a Muslim country because it's multitude of nationalities, culture, um, religions, it's agriculture with no borders. It's people to people. Great. That's what we do. Great. Now you've mentioned something very important on the fact that a lot of young people are not interested in matters agriculture. Of it's course. a dirty job. It's outside. You have to wait for a long period of time before you get results. With what you're doing, given that you have so many students who've gone through your hands, what are you doing to make agriculture enticing, exciting for the young people? Okay. Usually we start with, you know, I ask them a question. You see the agriculture in the desert, very advanced. They see the greenhouse, they see the innovations. They are, this is high tech. This is high tech, real high tech. I tell them, how come? And they said, technology. I said, okay, I will give you an, 
a greenhouse. Will you do the same? I don't know. I said, so it's not just the technology. technology. It's not just the technology. It's the human capital. It's the people. You need to change your mindset. You can do more. You can do more wherever, wherever you are with any dream that you have. I think we show them that, yes, you're allowed to dream. Yes, you're allowed to. If you can dream it, you can do. You need to find the way. You need to find the solution. I think this is what the special spirit and motivation and inspiration that our students go back home. That's what we have. We are the same, same people. We suffered in the history. We have the same. We are farmers. But our way of thinking is different. We believe we can find solution. Uh -huh. We can try. Yes, we failed. So what? We'll try again. But if you won't try, you will not reach to what you want. Great. This is the idea. So the students, when they come out to our school, to our campus, with no parents and the village, they allow themselves to discover their abilities and to think far. This right. is the idea. Because Great. we are the same people. I just need to press the button. And I can see when it comes, especially when they see the desert around them, mm -hmm. and how can we grow. So then they believe, wow, I can go back home and can do more to my country. Great. That's what we try to encourage them to do. Right. Yeah. Now, we want to understand how you have managed to overcome the challenges in the desert that has managed to make, you know, Israel a food basket. But before we get there, very quickly, talk to us about the harsh conditions in the desert that really do not favor agriculture as you give us now what you have done to overcome that. Of course. So... You know, a plant is a plant if we decided to do agriculture in the desert. So, first of all, the plant needs good land. But we have very poor soil in our area, so we find solution. You will never find it. Even I ask you, you need to think creatively to find a solution because what we did, we imported sand from Jordan, our neighbor. Wait a minute. Yes, You send. import this soil yes, that this is soil. here? This soil. This soil. No yes. way. This soil. We you have to import it. Yes, we imported soil from Jordan. No. We covered the fields, only the fields. How much of that do you need? Oh, we did a lot. We put 50 centimeter mm -hmm. in the farm. We put 50 centimeter and we grow on it. So we, br we imported soil. Now we need water. How can we find water? Mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, I, I told you only 30 millimeters. How can you find water? So we have two ways. First of all, we have to drill up to 1.5 kilometers to reach the water. water. This is one. Second, we invented the drip irrigation. Right. Sometimes you think about creative idea because you don't have it, because it's your challenge. So what the, the, drip, the drip irrigation is a pipe. Mm -hmm. that has holes right and the holes give water only to the you see only here it's wet you see it's yeah. a circle because the water brings because the pipe bring the water only to, to the, the roots, roots of the plant the roots of the plant not here you see here it's different soil see the different see the different see so the here different. you can tell it's completely wet it yes, has been but you not here not. Here not. So you All see, right. this is the solution. You could, because if you put here, you waste water. We cannot allow ourselves to waste water. We don't have. Because we don't have. So when you don't have, find a way. Don't say, I cannot. No way. No way. On the walls of the, of the campus, you will find. If you will it, it is not a dream. And other sentences, to, just to encourage the students, find a solution. Find a solution. Don't give up. Right. You never give up. Right. Yes. So drip irrigation is one of the ways. Yes. All right. And now I'm very curious to find out, is there any particular reason why you import your soil from Jordan? Can you get it from other countries? Of course. But oh. you know, <laughs> our, my, when the place, my field end, the border start. So Jordan, Jordan is just one kilometer from my field. So it's closer. It's, closer it's a proximity it, issue. It's not too expensive. I can bring, I see you have, you know, we have very good condition. I wish I could be here for a few years to have my students and together to, to just to, to do something in Kenya. And that's what we are doing here. Right. Because you have very good conditions. Talk to us about yeah. those conditions. There's a very farmer good. who feels like the conditions very. here no, are not no, favorable no, for no, agriculture. Talk to us about that. You have amazing conditions. Conditions. It's a question of how to manage the, the water. It's a question of man management in general. It's a question of finding or, or solutions or solve the problems. This is this is the idea. You can grow everything as you see here. Uh -huh. You can grow everything. Here we are doing research and it's only eight months. 
you will hear later what we are doing here. But that's what we want the children to see by their eyes that you can do more. Sometimes, you know, when we look at the other side of the border and you see desert, people tell us, wow, desert, they do nothing. The question is how we did this. This is what you need to focus on, how we did this, because we can find solutions and we can grow and we can produce food and nobody will stay hungry. Right. That's what we want. Right. We want. Now you've mentioned um, an array of agricultural produce that you were growing yes. and you mentioned you used to. It's like you stopped doing those particular ones and focused on dates. Is there any particular this reason? This is my farm. All Only right. my farm. Okay. Mm -hmm. my, my, my husband is still a farmer. Wake up, mo wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, going <laughs> outside. And I cannot change his mind because that's what he loves to do. That's, that's what he wants to do. But now he decided to grow dates. It's not uh, intensive. We used to grow tomatoes, which is a very intensive grow. Uh -huh. But now we are doing only dates. The harvest is very short. It's not a long season. And it's easier for us. Right. But we, but we, we need, you know, diversity Great. in the farms. So. Now, in such a region like this, if we focus on making sure that we're using modern technology, we're using innovation, we're saving on water, as a farmer, can I grow anything? Anything. Are you sure? And very good, I'm sure, 100%. Uh -huh. And very good yield and very good quality of the products, mm -hmm. yes. So anything can grow Anything here. can grow, anything you can do, you can do better. You can do better. Let us yes. have a look at what is grown in this okay. farm. This is, a, this is a pepper, this is a chili pepper. Did they teach you how we call it in Swahili? No. Pili pili. Pili pili? Yes. Now, you know how we call it in Hebrew? Tell me. Pilpel. So it's going to be a Hebrew uh, yes. and Pilpel. Swahili very, class? Yes. All right, yes. so. Pilpel. Pili pili. Great. Pili pili. Great. Pili pili. Great. From wiki. You got it. Uh -huh. They taught you that. How do you call it in Hebrew? In Hebrew, we call it kale. Kale, just like English. English. All right, cool. Yes. All right, yes. all right. What do we have here? This is uh, these are tomatoes. Uh huh. You see the. Kwaki soili tunaitaji? No. How do you say? We say. Nyanya. 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 You can't. You won't believe. <laughs> Agvania. In Hebrew. In Hebrew. Agvania. Yeah. Yeah. Great. See the Agvania. Wow. <laughs> You see, when Agubania. you meet people, mm -hmm. we feel that the hearts can talk. We are connecting. We are connecting. Farmer they to farmer. Are, fa people to people. <laughs> people to people, of course. All right, so we've finished Pili Pili, Pili um, Wiki, Agvania, Agvania, Nyanya. What uh, else do we have? What, uh, no, right now, we don't have uh, some flowers. Mm -hmm. How do you call flowers? Pa perach. 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 Yes. Here we call exactly. them Maua. Maua. Right. And I'll teach yes. you in Kamba. Teach me. Mala. Mala. Yes. Mala. Wow. Wow. Uh -huh. We used to have corn here. Uh -huh. We used to also have ke uh, cabbage. When we harvest two weeks ago, we gave to school. Right. To Every feed them. Yes, to feed them. To feed them and they took it home. Great. Yes. All right. So I want us to pause this part of the conversation here, but we will be back. So far, we have learned some of the innovation that is being applied in Israel that we can also do it back at home to convert this arid land into an agricultural basket. And we've also learned some Hebrew. Some Hebrew. And I've taught us some Swahili. Of course. And Kamba. I Kamba <laughs> and Pilipili. And I want to say something. All right. You know, before I left home this time, I felt, you know, Israel now has harsh, harsh situation. But we never say, we never give up. So I said, yes, I need to be here. Although my heart wants to stay at home, this is what Israel does, even for others, in harsh days. Mm -hmm. Because we need to do. Yeah. People to people. Yes. We all deserve the same. Oh, yes. thank you so much for being here. And well, we are not even done with this conversation. We will be back. And once we do that, we'd like to find out, do we have a lot of young people in Israel who are taking part in agriculture? If so, what are the incentives being put in place to motivate them into agriculture? That and a lot more on the other side of this break. Kenya's gold.